you say you want commitment from him. And what I'm trying to say to you is when people show you who they are, believe them. If you want to be single, then just be single. And if you want to be in a committed relationship, choose someone who's not going to cheat. Here is today's case. Mariah needs to respect my five-year plan. Eric has a fear of commitment, and he needs to get over that today. And I know his best friend Nas covers up his cheating. Mariah thinks my best friend Nas is my alibi, but I don't need an alibi because I'm not in the wrong. I don't think I can stay in this relationship if he doesn't compromise. If she doesn't respect the process, she's got to go. I hope Judge Faith really talks some sense to him today, because if she doesn't, I'm done. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Hunt versus Craig. Thank you, Juan. Eric Hunt. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mariah Craig. Yes, Your Honor. To court today. The two of you have been in a relationship for the last three years, living together for two years, and you're having a number of problems. Yes, Your Honor. And you are countersuing, ma'am, for $946.16. You say he owes you for a flight to Bali that you paid for. Yes, Your Honor. And I understand you have a witness with you today, sir, Mr. Nasir Jones? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for being here, sir. I'll call you shortly. Let's start with you, Mr. Hunt. Give me some background on your relationship and why the two of you have ended up in divorce court. Okay, Your Honor. So, first off, let me start by saying I love Mariah. We've traveled together. We've gone all over the world. I want to have a family with her. Mm -hmm. I just need time. I feel like we're very young, and I feel like we both need time to, like, figure ourselves out and find ourselves at least just five years. I have a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't want to respect that, and I need that in order for me to go forward so I don't have any regret in my life. Ms. Craig, what is your response to that? I feel like five years is a long time, you know? We change every month. We change every day. Five years... Who knows what could happen with that? So, you know, I love him too, but that's too long. Give me some background on the relationship. How'd the two of you meet? Well, Your Honor, um, you know, we're in a new age, so he slid in my DMs on Instagram. Okay. And at the time, it was business-related, mm -hmm. but then... Uh, well, it they all say that initially. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't end up working out business, and I feel like that kind of opened the door. DMs were open, and then... One day, I don't remember the conversation, but he was like, my number works too, and then that was a wrap. And this, you say, is business related. What were you doing for work at the time? I was modeling, Your Honor. And, and you, he sir? Was doing... I do music videos, Your Honor. So you say you're on this five-year plan. You, you are young, 25 years old. Did the, does the plan start now, or when did the five-year plan start, and what is the plan? So initially, we were in an open relationship, Your Honor. Hmm. Um, we were trying something different just so that way we could both kind of, like, still have each other but also have our freedoms. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't necessarily work out. Really? So Why is that? What happened? There are rules to the open relationship. And so we broke the rules. Who, I mean, whose idea was it to have an open relationship? It was my idea. It was your idea. You went along with it. Is that what you wanted? At the time, Your Honor, it was cool, you know, but here we are, three years later, mm -hmm. and what, what is slow anymore? Who, who set the ground rules for the open relationship? We, we agreed on the ground rules, Your Honor, but... And you submitted those to court today? We did, but I would just like to add in, I don't personally feel like I violated those rules until he violated them. Okay. So, no side relationships... So, yeah, first of all, no side relationships. So that means don't have what we have on the side. You're not talking to anybody else, like, permanently. It's kind of like a one-and-done thing, mm. which brings me to the next rule, which is, like, one-and-done, which means don't be linking up with people time and time again because that's essentially another relationship. No exes. Obviously, you don't want to rekindle any flames. Like, we don't want you... Which he violated. Yeah, I mean, it Let's go happened. through the rules. And then protect yourself. Like, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you wrap it up or whatever it is. And then don't discuss. Just keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. And you both agreed to the rules. She ended up getting jealous. But again, we're young, and I feel like I've expressed that I do have love for her mm -hmm. and that I do love her, and I've shown time and time again that I'm a man of my word. So I feel like, you know, I should be able to have that freedom at least. Well, who broke the rules? 
I broke the rules. Well, honor. you just said you were a man of your word, so you should have the freedom. So how'd you end up breaking the rules? So I, I broke the rules. I did the ex <laughs> thing. And I think that... The big one. You hooked it, up with it, one of your exes? I did. A significant one. Your honor. I definitely did. Did you tell her? Did she find out on her own? So she found out on her own. She ended up going through my computer, mm. which is another one of the rules we had, like, a do not express what happens behind closed doors kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, it surprised me that she would go as far as to try to dig and find out what we agreed we didn't want to know. So you're upset because she broke the rules to find out that you broke the rules? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. So then you find that out, and what happens? At that point, Your Honor, I was very frustrated, so I confronted him and just made him come clean on everything because mm -hmm. I realized, yes, we weren't supposed to discuss things. That was one of the rules. But I feel like when you're in an open situation, you need to have open communication. Was so... this the first time you were in an open relationship? Yes. Miss Craig, this was his idea. I understand that. But you, would you had really preferred that it had been something else, but you just went along with it? Your Honor, I feel at the time we both did get out of yes. relationships. Mm -hmm. So at the time, it was cool. But again, when so but much... But it changed yeah. as time went on. Right. So much time goes on and you just expect it to be the same. It's... She knew mm -hmm. from the beginning. What happened? How did you break the rule with someone? She's chilling with some girl, like, just booed up. You know what I'm saying? That, like, cuddling. We were just sitting there. So you think that she is... I'm trying is... to be cool because it's TV. So, Miss Craig. Yes, Your Honor. Were you there? Netflix and chilling that night. What happened? How did you break the rule with someone? Who wants to tell me about that? I'm a music producer as well. Mm -hmm. I make beats. I work for a lot of different artists, so I go to the studio often. So I'm sitting there with her at the apartment, She's saying that she's got all these things to do. Her friend is coming over. So she told me she was tired. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to come to the studio with me, but she said she was tired. So I said, OK. I okay, just went to the extra. studio. Mm -hmm. I get to the studio. I literally get an email to my phone saying that somebody is watching a movie. Your purchase for $4.99 has gone through. Mm -hmm. So I sent her a text. I'm like, OK, so like, are you watching a movie? I thought you were tired. Like, what are you still doing up? Like. She said, I don't know anything about a movie. What movie? Oh, yeah, I don't know what All you're right. talking about. So I drop back by the apartment. I get in there. She's chilling with some girl, like, just booed up, just watching the same movie that she didn't know anything about. And was then, it just a friend? We're not, she tried we to play it cool. Yeah, it she was just She tried to, friend. like, come outside and be on some, like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, just acting like it didn't happen. Well, how, do you know, how do you know it was more than a, so, just a friendship going here's, on? Here's my thing, is, like, if you were just friends with somebody, you wouldn't have to lie, number one, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Secondly, they, they were chilling. You know what I'm saying? That, like, cuddling. We were just like, sitting it there. Was like, he's, he's really doing too much. I'm right not now. dragging it, Your Honor. So you think that she is... I'm trying is... to be cool because it's TV. But they were... No, scared. he's doing too much. He's doing way too much. So, it was what do you like say that. you saw? It looked intimate. Let's just put it that way. It looked more intimate so than Ms. what So, Ms. Craig. Yes, Your Honor. Were you there, Netflix and chilling that night? We were just watching a movie. It was nothing... Like, everything he said, way too much. Cause... Why did you tell him that you didn't know anything about what he was talking about when he got the notification that you'd order a movie? <sighs> Why did okay. you tell him that? I told him that because at the time, he left this out. This is really big. So we were not on good terms because he did something he shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we didn't talk for like a week or so. And he decided to just come back and be all, oh, I'm sorry. Not, here's some flowers or let me make a grand gesture. Just, See, oh, I'm when sorry. I was the night, so the evening the, where the I... two of you have all, uh, all these rules. None of them are really working out for you. But this is curious. Why do you say she lied when, according to the rules, mm -hmm. she wasn't breaking one of the rules? So... Even if she had been doing more than just watching a movie. So we were in a serious relationship at this time. I had already met. Oh, so up. the rules had already been this is... out of the window? Yes, Your Honor. So now you're in a committed relationship. Your Honor, that was yes? a week of us being not together. It could all be so simple. It could all be so simple, but it's never that simple when you're 
open yourselves up to complicated situations and entanglements. This is true. Right. Your Honor, so, I do want to throw in there, he also flew a girl out while we were together and thought that he could hide things like that. So he's not just Mr. saying that it could all be so simple. Was this he had pre me and someone else. Was this pre thing. or post the rules? This one's post. Okay. So, post the rules, you flew somebody out and hooked up with them? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so y'all just don't even care if you have rules or not. You just do what you want to do. So you've been together for three years. You say you have this five-year rule. Yes. So is it is it a total of eight years that you plan on waiting before moving forward? I'm just waiting until I could at least get to, like, at least be 30. Like, you have so many different years of your so life. So five more years, because you're 25 now. Yeah. You've been yeah. together three years? Yes. Now you say you have a five-year rule? So we're on an eight-year plan. Why is Mr. Jones here today? He's my witness. She feels like I'm the, the culprit, sort of, like, to get him out the house. So when you're out, do you see him flirting and talking to other women? The club scene, it's a, it's a place to network. Is that a yes me. or a no, or are you just not going to answer that question? Why is Mr. Jones here today? And he's here because he's my witness to the nonsense. Let's hear from Mr. Jones and see exactly what testimony he's here to offer the court. Mr. Jones? Your Honor? Yes, thank you for being here today, sir. You are Nasir Jones. I understand you are friends with Mr. Hunt. What have you observed in this relationship and what do you want to testify about today? Well, Your Honor, what I've observed is really me and Eric, we go way back 10 plus years since the sandbox. So I know this man. He's a good man, he's an honest man. And he knows what he wants. He communicates. Except for those two times he admittedly broke the rules. Okay. Your Honor, His I'm own not rules. entirely involved in their relationship, mm -hmm. but I know that he is an honest man. He's always very upfront. Mm -hmm. What is the issue that you believe she has with you? I believe she, she feels like I'm the, the culprit, sort of, like, to get him out the house mm -hmm. and uh, have him, you know, talking to all these different types of women and everything. But really, Eric, he's the one he's... He's the life of the party, but he just wants to make sure everybody is having a good time, everybody's safe, everybody's good, you know. So, when you're out with Mr. Hunt, do you see him flirting and talking to other women? The club scene, it's a, it's a place to network. So, it's usually a group of us. We all go out. It's not just me and him. That's the other thing. It's is not just me. Is that a yes me. or no? Or are you just not going to answer that question? Yeah, that's but, yes like no. I, I, can't, that I, can't, I can't verify if it's flirting or not because, really, the club scene is like you network, you meet new people, you, you get information. He's just being friendly. Wait, right. can we define I mean, that? You would not define all it. night and not say anything, you know, like... Your yes. Honor, can I say a few things? Mm -hmm. She has a tracking device on my phone. Mm. Like, it's really out of control. Like, I can't go anywhere. She be seeing where I'm going. And when we go out, I just be holding it down. If my friends... If, it, if there's a group of girls by the bar, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna, hey, how you doing? Let us buy you some drinks. That's my boy Nas, blah, blah, blah. But that's really it. I initiated So you're initiated. just trying to introduce Nas to new people. Right. How's I'm that not... worked out for you, Mr. Jones? Have you met some people? Pretty well. Been here in Atlanta for about a year, so it's been working out pretty well. And so I don't really know that much people. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I pop out with him, it's really my only chance to really get out and really network okay. and meet new people. Do you feel like Miss Craig is being insecure? Yes. Definitely, Your Honor. I mean, and there's been times where, like, he's even had to record himself, like, of me talking to girls to just tell her, like, so you think I'm not doing anything, you know? Miss Craig being upset about it is just her being insecure. Yes, I Your mean, Honor. Not like, thank you, thank you like... Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor. I appreciate I... your unbiased and objective testimony today. <laughs> Very helpful. <laughs> Your Honor, let me just Very say, helpful. say one you thing. Have, let, no, because no, Mr. Jones has cracked this case wide open. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I would just like to point out... Why is it that if you're networking to get Nasir some girls, Your Honor, how does it make sense to have a group of girls for one man Nas? I'm just wondering what happens to those other girls, what he's doing. Miss Craig, Miss Craig, let me tell you something. You have, to, you have to ask yourself that, Miss Craig. If you're gonna be on this plan for another five years, what you can't do is sit around and feel like you have to track and wonder and wish and hope about what's happening. get to the $946.16 that you say you're suing for. Why do you say he owes you money for a flight? 
Your Honor, at the time, we were planning a vacation to Bali for my birthday, and he was right next to me on my laptop, watched me press the purchase button, getting the tickets together. And then, fast forward some months later, we go on the trip, everything is lovely, and now he feels like because he spent money on my birthday trip that he doesn't owe me for the ticket because of the money that he spent. Well, but was there an agreement, ma'am, that he would purchase the flight or reimburse you for the ticket? Yes. There was an agreement? Yes, Your Was Honor. that an agreement, sir? Yes, it, it was an agreement. Okay, That's so why right. haven't you paid her the $946 back? I paid for so many things on the trip. She mm -hmm. had two Airbnbs, mm -hmm. one in the jungle, one over in the city. There was one that was like a nice modern kind of setup. But all that stuff was expensive, and she did pitch in, but... You were spending your were, own money. I was putting things no, out there didn't so spend that... No, he did I've heard enough. So, so, I've heard enough. I simply asked the question, did, you, did the two of you agree about this particular plane ticket? Because of what it really is is a verbal contract. If you come in court today and told me there was no agreement, it was just a part of the plan that she would pay for the plane ticket, then I'd say, okay, it's a wash. But it doesn't matter how much money you spent in Bali. We are simply talking about $946.16 for a flight that you agreed to pay her back for. You agreed to pay her back, Sir, so you owe her the money. And I don't want to hear about you have five years to pay it back because you're on a five-year plan. You owe her this money now. So when you leave court today, <laughs> run her her $946.16. Now, as for the relationship, the two of you started out. Ms. Craig, you agreed to something that you really didn't want to do in your heart of hearts from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Juan, how many uh, times have we seen this? Uh, plenty of times, plenty. It's the good old switcheroo. It all sounds good in theory in the start, but in practice, it blows up right in front of you. You have set forth what you what is your five-year plan. Listen, I commend you for the fact that you're saying, I am not ready to be married. When someone tells you they are not ready to be married, the last thing you want to do is try to convince them to settle down and move forward with marriage, with kids, when it's really not what they want to do. Your Honor, let me just... Nope, we're done. We're done. No last words? No, no last words. <sighs> I give the last words, and I just gave them to you. So you have a decision you want to make. He said there is a five-year plan. Eight. It was a five-year time period. He said there is a five-year time period on an eight-year plan. So you have to decide what you want to do with the next five years of your life. Do you want to wait, or do you want to move on? You're 25 years old, you have the right to make a decision. I'm not going to disparage him for saying, I want to wait five years. When people tell you, you got to listen to what they say. He's telling, he's speaking his truth. So I just ask you to listen and you make your decision accordingly. But $946.16, you owe her that now. That is my judgment. Good luck to both of you. I'm not willing to throw this diamond away. I want to make sure that I keep my relationship. I just want to be able to have my time. That's all I'm asking for. Actions speak louder than words. So with that being said, I feel like maybe Eric needs to figure out what it is that he really means. I kind of need to also figure some things out because a lot of stuff went unsaid. I'm going to go ahead and pay this little check. It's only $900. And then we'll see what happens from there. There absolutely can be a future um, with us. I just feel like she just needs to figure out what she wants. I feel like the future really just depends on the behavior of Eric. You say you want commitment from him. And what I'm trying to say to you is when people show you who they are, believe them. If you want to be single, then just be single. And if you want to be in a committed relationship, choose someone who's not going to cheat. Here is today's case. 
And like, through the whole time, he's talking about, I wasn't with no girl, I was with my homeboys. She putting the little memories on Snapchat and they together. You want him to be around you so badly that you will tell him he doesn't have to pay anything to live there? I was dumb. Do you want to continue on and be in an actual committed relationship with Mr. Smith? Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience, and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Franketta from Flint, Michigan. Hi, Franketta. Welcome to Divorce Court. We are so happy to have you with us today. Your Honor, today's case is Howlett versus Smith. Thank you. Natasha Howlett. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mr. Jamal Smith... Yes, Your Honor. ...to court today. The two of you have been together for three years, but you say there are a number of issues in your relationship, and you also say he owes you $3,204 in back rent, and you want to be paid. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, why don't you give me some background, ma'am? Okay, me and Jamal, we've been together off and on for three years. We have a one-year-old son together. And I'm just really at a make or break moment with me. He's a womanizer, he's a compulsive liar, and he's constantly cheating. And it's like, it's just right now, I'm just, I'm either now, get right now, or I'm just done. What do you have to say about that? This is not the first time you've heard this, I'm assuming. I did some cheating, but I wasn't the only one doing cheating and stuff like that right there. So, I mean, if one gotta do it, the other one gotta do it too. It's a make or break for both of us. So, you're saying that because. Miss Howlett cheated, you did as well. And had she not done that, you're saying you would have never engaged in yeah. stepping outside of your relationship? Yeah. Okay, is that true, Miss Howlett? No, Your Honor. It's not. Every time he cheat, I like he cheat first and then it's like, okay, I'll probably do my little dirt in the in the, you know, next. But it's always, it's him. It's like a tit for tat type thing. Well, give me some examples of, of what you say and I'll, I'll hear about the little dirt you say you did in retaliation. Okay, like one time, he was asleep because I always catch him, like, it's always I catch him cheating through his phone. So, like, I probably just peeped a little, oh, him always on his phone or his phone on airplane mode. So one night I went through his phone, his phone was on airplane mode. And so when I was going through his phone, it was him and his ex. That's like you said, you peeped a little. So you, you actually went through the phone, right? Okay, I peep a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. So I go through his phone and it's him and his ex. They communicating. And just, I'm scrolling through it and I'm scrolling down and up and down. And she's saying I love you like numerous of times, like over 20, like numerous of times. And so you, and he was like, I love you too. Like at the end of the day, you were in a relationship with me or you so-called trying to be in a relationship with me. Why, why you got your ex saying I love you? Okay. Are you telling your ex you love her, too? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I mean, I did then, but it wasn't nothing like that. You were just having casual conversation? And like, you, like you when, she, when she went through my phone, she never caught, like, no action or nothing like that. Me messing around, it was just always conversating. So it was just conversation? Yep. You weren't actually seeing your ex at the time? No. So the two of you have been in a relationship for three years, but you said, really things started going downhill about a year ago when you started catching him lying. Yeah, like, and... when my son was born. Like, after my son was born, everything basically went downhill. How? Such as him not being, like, financially there for him or just him just not being there at all. He haven't had a job in, like, years. Like... Well, you I got together no three years ago. Was he... I was working at Lowe's when you had, dude. Sir, that sir, was hold, hold on a second. How long has it been since you say he had a job? About, about uh, two years. And what is the reason for that? It's him being an unreliable father, like, not, no motivation. Like, me, like I said, me and him, we have a one-year-old son together. My son stays an hour away with a family member, so it's... Why is your child an hour away? Because I work. I work, like, five to six times out the week, mm -hmm. days out the week. So he's home by himself. Like, he got his own little thing going on. So it's like, because I work so much, I don't have time to take care of my child, then go to work, and all this, that, and the third. So he's not helping you watch the baby? No, my, he, my son stayed an hour away from me. Okay, why aren't you helping her watch the baby? I was helping her. Y'all know, I was helping her watch the baby, but he was, like, in his conditions that he was going through, 
I wasn't. That was my first time ever going through that, and I didn't know how to how to cope with it. Cause you said that he, the baby, um, was born. Was your son born prematurely? No, he was in the NICU when he was born. Oh. He had fluid in his lungs. Okay, but so. he's doing better now. Yes. Much better, right? Yes. You said you didn't know how to properly take care of your son. Yeah, he was then, crying so he much. He was crying all the time and stuff like that right then. He's a I didn't know what to do. I was calling her while I'm at work, while she was at work and stuff. I guess she was getting tired of me calling her while she was at work. She'll leave work, come home and all that. I tell her she ain't how to do that. She just tell me what to do and stuff like that right now. Is it true that you haven't worked in two years? My son is a year old. I was working when she had my son. I was working at Lowe's. Okay, so he was working a year ago? He worked there for like two or three months. But what happened, though, in the last year? Why haven't you worked in a year, especially now after you've had a child? And this is your third child. I know not yeah. with you, but you have other children, right? Yeah, I mean, I was... I'm trying. I mean, You're work, trying on, to work on him here and there. It ain't like I'm just not looking for work. I mm -hmm. look for work all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, fill out applications and stuff, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to keep trying. Yeah, but... as, as hard as you can, because you have a child now, and she needs help. She needs help raising your son. He lived with her, um... Family member. Yeah, and um, her family member don't deal with me like that. Okay. Cause well, he, he has no patience for my son. Like when I was working and he was up there, and that's when I was working nights just at the mo mm -hmm. at the time. He'll call my phone numbers at time when the baby's crying, and it's like you gotta cope with our child as well. You can't keep mm -hmm. calling me. You have to learn how to take care of your son just like she is. She found out I was in at the casino with a girl. She cut up all th over a thousand dollar worth of clothes and shoes in my yard. She did what? Cut up over a thousand. She cut up your clothes. I did. It could have been worse. Y'all always want to come in and tell these stories, but you leave out the parts that make you look bad. You say that he refuses to get a fast food job because he wants to work in a warehouse or do construction. So he is making money by doing what? Selling plasma. Okay, is that how you're making money? No, I was. I don't do it no more. Oh, you don't do it anymore? So when you were doing it, how often were you doing it? Probably twice a week. Twice a week. And how much do you get paid for selling your plasma? Probably like $50, $60. 50 or $60 twice a week for doing that? <sighs> and then, Your Honor, it was one time that we decided that we were gonna work on us. And so, in the process of us working on us, he told me that he was gonna go out of town with his friends. But before that situation, it was a number that popped up in his phone. And it was between him and his girl. And that was like, they were gonna chill or whatever the case may be. And so I had, you know, I checked him on that, like, what was this? Like, what's all that got going on? He called it, it was just a friend. So when I added the girl, like, I had added the girl on Snapchat, her information popped up on the little Snapchat or whatever. So I noticed when he was out of town, the girl was out of town. Mm. Okay, so I'm up here trying to put two to two together, two plus two equal four. I added all together and, <laughs> like, they was actually in a casino together. Mm. So when I found out they was in a casino together, I called his phone, not once, but probably like over 100 times. And, like, dude, the whole time, he's talking about, no, that wasn't me. I wasn't with no girl. I was with my homeboys. But Jessica, like, after he come back on Snapchat, she put in the little memories on Facebook, I mean, on Snapchat, and they together. So you were at the casino with her? Yes, Your Honor. But I lied at first, because I didn't want to... I didn't want to go doing? through all that shit um, But we working on each other. But... It ain't like I told her I wasn't even, you feel me? It did nothing happen or no, none of that when she came to me when I what got What money back. were you spending at the casino, sir? I had money. Just like she could, about the casino incident, she found out I was in, on the, at the casino with a girl. She cut up all, over a thousand dollar worth of clothes and shoes in my yard. She did what? Cut up over a thousand dollars. She cut up your clothes? Over a thousand dollars worth of clothes. Over a thousand dollars worth of clothes and shoes and stuff. Then, say, honey. my mama done, my, my, I got, my mama done, they say that morning, they went out the door, say they thought a yard sale was going on in the yard. All my clothes all over the front Did yard. you cut up his clothes? Yes, Your Honor. Now, see, y'all always want to come in and tell these stories, but you leave out the parts that make you look bad. Tell the whole story. So he went to the casino with another woman, he, which he lied about, but then you're gonna cut up his clothes? Why? It was out of anger. It was. It just... I just hit a black little spot in my mind and just... You just blacked went. out and started cutting stuff? I did. It could have been worse, like... But he was out of town, yeah. so... Not good for the two of you. And this, this is the time period the two of you are working on the relationship? You go out of town with another woman at the casino, I still don't know what money you're spending, <laughs> and you find out about it and cut up his entire wardrobe. 
you said that you took a DNA test. I told him that it, it was, it was me or another dude. Do you want to continue on and be in an actual committed relationship with Mr. Smith? If things can go well, then yes, but like... like when I... have they ever gone well? Has there ever been a time where they've been going well? What is the reason that the two of you have been in this relationship for three years if you've been back and forth with each other so many times and have done so many hurtful things to each other? For me, my son. Mm-hmm. Did you plan to have a child with Mr. Smith? Oh, no. Unexpected. Because, you know, there are certain situations where you have to learn how to be a good parent and hopefully be good co-parents, but doesn't mean that you need to be together in a relationship. Because when you stay in a relationship that is not working and that is dysfunctional and you allow your child to witness that, all you're doing is normalizing dysfunctional relationship in front of your child. So that's not the reason that you stay in a relationship. You want him to obviously be a big part of your son's life and you say that you do want to be there. Yeah and you want to be a big part of his life, that's great. It does not mean that the two of you need to be a couple. I've read a lot about the history between the two of you. And you said that you took a DNA test to so, make sure that you were your child's father. You didn't think you were? Your Honor, she told me that uh, it was a chance that I wouldn't have been. I told him that it, it was... It was me or another dude. Were the two of you on a break then, or were you working things out? No, we were just, like, messing around at the moment, and then I ended up pregnant, so that's why I told him, like, I understand. 50, 50. Okay, I understand. So you weren't in a relationship at the time. Yeah. But you tried to, after you had a child, you actually tried to make it work in the relationship. Yeah. And it hasn't worked. Do you want to continue on and be in an actual committed relationship with Mr. Smith? If things can go well, then yes, but like... like when I... have they ever gone well? Has there ever been a time where they've been going well? Mm. It has been some good days. How many? Five? Five. Mm, Ten. It's been a few good times. A few good days yeah. out of two years. You know, life is too short to be in a relationship where you have a few good days over the course of years, right? Yes. You're 22 years old. You have the rest of your life ahead of you. You're 24. And you have three children, sir. You're going to have to do better in terms of providing financially for your family. And I know it's not going to be easy. It's not. Sometimes life isn't. Mm -hmm. And then, Your Honor, it was also this one time whenever we caught ourselves being on a little break once again. And... Y'all been on more breaks than you've been together. And what happened this time? With this time, it was like I was involved with one of my exes. Mm -hmm. My ex, ex-girlfriend, contacted him to tell him that me and my ex was bad talking or whatever. This is when you were doing your little dirt, as you call it. Yes, mm -hmm. y'all know. He thought it would be okay to get out of revenge to go sleep with my ex, ex. Mm. So it was like a tit for tat thing once again. Mm -hmm. So the two of you have been going back and forth, doing things to hurt each other. That's what happened. She says she's done her little dirt. You've done yours, too. You're suing for $3,204 for back rent. Tell me about that. Well, when... Before my son was born, back in January of 2018, like, we decided that we was all gonna move. Like, wasn't even moving in, just, like, more so that we gonna... He gonna sleep over at my house, and then eventually just started him moving in, coming here every day. And so, without that process, like, from, from January till probably, like, the end of, end of 2018, like, he really didn't pay nothing. Like, he... No rent? Nothing. Why did you allow him to stay there without paying anything? I was dumb, really. Like, Why did you stay there without Your paying Honor, rent? I told her from the beginning, I say, I wasn't gonna pay nothing because I feel like I wasn't gonna have no say-so. Well, well, okay, but and you I live told, in there. And I told forget, her... Forget say-so. Let's, let's get past no, that. No, I told her I can go back to my mom's house because I knew, I knew in the end, like, around this time, it was gonna come, oh, you been staying here this long and ain't paid nothing. I been told her I'd go back to my mom's house so I wouldn't have to hear none of that. So you told her in advance I you were her. not going to pay but rent. But I told her if we were to get our own spot, I'd help. And she told you it's okay? Yeah. You do she not said, have to pay I, I rent. Feel what you're because I was about to give you this speech. No one lives anywhere for free. But did you tell him he did not have to pay rent? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you did tell him. You told him he didn't have to pay rent. Why? But that's 
on it whenever. I'll probably be like, the bills, you don't pay nothing. He'll be like, I ain't gonna pay nothing. Anyway, I can go move with my mama house. So you want him to be around you so badly that you will tell him he doesn't have to pay anything to live there? No. Is that what it is? That's what it sounds like? So now you want to sue for it, and you can't because he doesn't owe you. You told him he didn't have to pay anything. That's all the, He all in And he's not off. even suing you for the clothes you cut up. Because I thought I was going to have to do a little math and make some deductions off this rent for those clothes you cut based on the evidence he submitted about the value of his wardrobe. I don't even believe it It that wasn't $1,000. No. Boy. But I'm not going to order him to pay you for back rent when you told him he didn't have to pay. He should have been paying rent. He should have been paying something to stay there. We never there. discussed rent whenever But you gave him in. a pass, and I'm not going to hold him accountable if you don't hold him accountable. You're right. I want today to be the day you start making some different choices about this relationship. Do not let a man live with you who's not going to contribute to the roof that's over his head. And, sir, you live in that house, you should want to contribute. And even if she tells even you, I... let me finish. Mm -hmm. Even if she tells you you don't have to pay, you should want to contribute. You should want to pay because it's the right thing to do. You know, Mr. Smith, you've made some mistakes in your past and you're still paying the price, but you're going to have to work harder to support your child, to contribute more. Even if it is working fast food, it is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get a job when you leave court today. Ms. Howlett, you're 22 years old with a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. You're working five, six, seven days a week. You have a young child and you're doing the best you can right now. But just because you have your son, all of your standards don't have to go out the window. You do understand you have the rest of your life ahead of you. But you're the one that's in my courtroom that's working 50 hours a week and walking back and forth to work even when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Trying to get back and forth because you're trying to provide for your family. I want to reiterate this to you. You don't have to stick and be in a relationship where you are not happy and where the two of you are going back and forth, doing things to hurt each other. It's just not working. It's time for a fresh start. I'm dismissing your case in the lawsuit for $3,204 for back rent, Ms. Howlett. I can't hold him responsible when you gave him a pass to live there for free. Don't do it again. Good luck to both of you. With Judge Faith's verdict, I do believe that she did hit on some very common things. I do need a, you know, got some self work to do with myself. Other than that, I guess it is best for us to go our ways. Like she said, we got a lot to work on and stuff like that right there. I mean, we do share a child. Like, I do want a two-parent household. But in order for us to be able to work things out, we, it's, it's a lot that we're going to have to work on. Nobody's staying with me for free anymore, I can tell you that. I feel like more applications and, um, I guess call more, call more jobs and stuff like that right now. Yeah, we'll have to end it. It's, it'll be too toxic if we continue. today that you love each other and I believe it but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage there's so many other things that go in it it's not just about you anymore here is today's case we was doing good till up till we got married the woman who you don't trust who you allowed to move in your house you're not worried about the two of them sleeping together because you agree the three of you will I put an old phone that I had behind the sofa on record I checked the phone and bam they was having sex that's hard evidence. Well, she manipulated me. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is a case of Foots versus Washington. Thank you, Juan. 
Simone Foots. Yes. You are suing the defendant who is your husband, LaShawn Washington. You say not only is the relationship over and you want a divorce, but he also owes you $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll hear from you first, ma'am. Now, I understand that the two of you have been married seven years, but you've been together 13 years. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what's happening here? I'm just tired of his lies, his cheating, and just all these other women coming up pregnant with babies. And I just want to... I just want myself back. So, you mean he's had other children since the two of you have been married with other women? Yes. Okay. Is is that true, sir? One baby. One baby. Okay, just, not, just not, one? Not babies, but one baby. But you understand that that, too, is a big problem for I do. your wife because you're married? I do. Okay, so, so what happened? You I... can, so you could understand why she's upset? No, oh, yeah, of course. Of course, I understand why she's upset, but at the same time, she needs to, like, she needs to tell, like, why the whole situation happened. Like, how it happened, how it came about. Well, I know how Which... it happened, but right. why, why did, did you it allow it to happen is the question. I wanted her to feel how I felt because when I went away and I was gone for a while, I told her then, when I was gone, I was like, we can break this up right now, and if I come back, just keep it real with me. Just, just let me know you can be there for me. Okay, but... because you went away, I read your papers, you went away, you went out of town for how many months? 16 months. You were married at the time? No. No. So this is before you got married? Yes. But you were together? Yes. And you said, if you want to see other people while I'm gone, let me know. That's right. But the agreement was you wouldn't. That's right. And Correct. you would be faithful to each other. Correct. Okay. And that did not happen? We wasn't even married. I understand that. But you did know, you have an agreement that you would be faithful to each yeah, other? Yeah, but I was. Okay. And, um, we was... I was until he started accusing me. Uh, like, he got other people telling him that I'm doing this just all because I'm going out. So he was the cause of you seeing someone else because the accusations were being made yes. so you were like, why not just go ahead and do yes. it? Yes. Really? Yes. Because it's just like the fact like I was there. He can't act like I wasn't there. Because mm -hmm. we, we met, what... 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, we was doing good. He met me in a convenience store. He came up there like, can I get a pack of cigarettes? And your number, yes, it's corny. And, you know, it just went from there. I got his number. I didn't have a phone at the moment because I was just started working there. So, you okay. know, I just waited till I got me a phone and I finally called him and we You followed up? There. Yeah. Okay, and the, and the rest is history. Yes. How long were you dating before he went out of town for 16 months? A year. I first born just turned one. Okay, so you'd gotten together, you had a child, and then he went away during that 16-month time period. And because he was suspicious of you cheating, you went ahead and cheated. Yes, ma'am. Okay, with one person. And how did you find out about it? Uh, it was a guy that came where I was at. He from her, her hometown. Okay. And he had seen her numerous times, and he had told me. He, he told you? Yes. So you had a snitch in the hometown. Yeah. So, why did you then go forward and propose? You did propose, right? And the two of you got married? Okay, I didn't know at that time. I oh. didn't know. I, oh, okay. I never knew until I after we got married. Until after you got married. That's right. So, how long after you got married did you discover that she had cheated before the two of you got married? It was about a year. Yeah, it was about a year, about two years. About a year. And during that time period, were you happy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we was in a good place. And then you say that is what started all of the trouble. Correct. Because one of the guys in the hometown came to you. Correct. I mean, you know how it is. You, you're the last and up. Yeah. Everybody else knew but you. Everybody knew, yeah. So yeah. then you find out, and then what happens? Well, when I found out, I stripped it up under the rug. Okay. And um, then it's another time where I went to get something to eat. And uh, when I came into the house... And I opened the door. She was on the phone with a guy, and she tried to hide the phone. So no. that automatically, after she had that, raised told your me, suspicions at that point. Again. So were you talking to someone else? Kind of, sort of. But he's skipping a whole lot of stuff before we got married, too. Well, okay, I know there's a lot of layers to this, but the reason we're here is because you say there is this mistrust, this 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 cheating, this deception. He started it first because he cheated first. Okay, so he said you cheated first. You say he cheated first and he, he had a first. child. I but... cheated first in the marriage idea. No, you cheated first but yeah, before but, we but, got married. But the this problem is, while I was is pregnant. But the problem is that you, you can't even keep up with the cheating because and it may be retaliatory, but does it really matter? Because it's still hurtful and harmful to the relationship, either way. Now, 
You say he cheated first. Yes, what, are you, what are you referring to? The time when I was... We just found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. He called, like, you know, he didn't come home. One time, like, he was out clubbing, I guess, with his homeboys. He, he didn't come home. He wouldn't call. He wouldn't answer none of my... Uh, How text. do you know he was cheating? Because finally, he finally said it, that he was cheating when he called himself, when I caught myself a nagging. Okay, so both of you hooked up with other people prior to getting married. How do you think this relationship was going to work? Because you, if you can't commit while you're not married, what makes you think... Because a ring doesn't change someone. Mm -hmm. Words, vows don't change people. It's only behavior and a decision to change that changes people. So you have this history of dishonesty leading up into this marriage. How do you, how'd you think this was going to work? And you then invite her Still to it. live yeah. in your house under your roof with your husband? Yes, because... Make it make sense. Yes, I didn't have proof that it was... A, it's just my gut feeling. You thought it might make it better with her moving in because you could see it for yourself? Keep your friends close and your enemies even closer? <laughs> After you get married, what happens? Because you said there was an incident with your neighbor. Tell me about that. You know, all of a sudden, I just felt like they was having something going on. Because, you know, you have... A woman get that intuition. You know, okay. once you get that woman intuition, this is right before the time he talking about, like, I was on the phone with the other guy. Mm -hmm. This is around the same time I'm having a feeling like he's talking to her. You to know the neighbor? I mean? Yes. Did you ask him? Yes, he'll, he'll deny it. I he even denied her. And so, I even asked so her. So what happened? How did she end up coming to the, the home with like, the two of you? You know, I'm a kind of person. She needed somewhere to go, so I let her in. So, okay, you, if you're kind, you take somebody out to dinner. You don't, you don't invite them yeah. to live and in I, your house. And I know that now. Somebody you don't know like yeah, that. Yeah, I know because that Because what ends up happening? So, you know, we all, you know, we all friends. We kicking it, hanging out with each other. But, you know, I'm still asking, do y'all have something going on? So, you then invite her still to live now. in your house under your roof with your husband? Yes, because... Make it make sense. Yes, I didn't have proof that there was... A, it's just my gut feeling. Okay, so I'm not saying you had to be CSI. But yeah. I'm saying you had a suspicion and, and you, you thought it might make it better with her moving in because you could see it for yourself? Keep your friends close and your enemies even closer? Yeah, probably. So, I wasn't... I wasn't even thinking about... How did that work out for you? It didn't no. work good. I got... Like, I was... I got... I went down. Like, I... I it pressed. didn't work out well at all we because what happened? We didn't have nothing going on in the first place. What happened, Mr. Yes, Washington? Did. We, we yes, never, did. We never had anything yes, going on until after all no. this became upon the threesome when we had no, that. that was after before. That. that was before. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So, so before... The neighbor moved in, because I'm going to get to what you just said in a yeah. second. There was nothing going on between the two of you? There was nothing going so on. So, after she moved in... Yes. So, you, what you're saying is you're just an opportunist. You took yes. advantage of the opportunity. That's exactly what I did. Okay, so tell me how long this neighbor, friend of yours, lived in the home. She really didn't stay there. She probably was there probably like three to four days or something like that. So, she never moved in? Correct. She was just there for a few days yeah. when all of this happened? Yeah. Then, the woman who you don't trust, who you allow to move in your house, you then agree that instead of... You're not worried about the two of them sleeping together because you agree the three of you will, right? That was his agreement. But you agree to it. Yes, I feel like he manipulated me. Did, did, but he asked you and you said yes? This is the exact words. If you want this marriage to work, you would do this for me. And, and you said what? Okay. Why? Because I wanted this marriage because I loved him. And, 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 but love isn't enough yeah. in a marriage. You got to have respect. You have to have happiness. You have to have understanding. You have to have kindness. Love isn't enough. Because how did that work out for you? It did not work. You didn't like it. Because what ends up happening? You got suspicious of what after the threesome? That they were still having uh, sex behind my back. And were you? Yes, we did. Okay. And how did you know that? How did you... Did you actually turn into CSI? What yes, evidence did I you sure have? Yes, I did. I put a phone, an old phone that I had behind the sofa on record as I go to work. And as, when I came back home, I checked the phone and, bam, they was having sex. That's hard evidence. So, I know you didn't try to deny it. I did. You yeah, did? He did. Yeah, you did. I didn't know nothing about the recorder. You can't let someone else have that kind of power over you. If there are no consequences, there's no reason for anyone to ever change. You've given up all your power. Mr. Washington, why would you do this while your wife is at work? Because the agreement was to have a threesome, right? Mm -hmm. But you just figured you already did it with her. 
So you just gonna do it some more because she's living in the house? I just thought I would get away with it, to be honest with you. Wow. <sighs> That's probably one of the worst things that someone can do in your own home because it's, it's really disrespectful, yes. to put it lightly, right? Because it's your house. Yes. Now, you've already invited this woman in, but you have an agreement. I to make him happy. I just wanted my marriage. You well, know, I, love, I love this man. This is not love. Yeah. Right? This is not what love is. So your entire definition of love needs to be reconsidered altogether. Because you love someone, does it mean giving up all of yourself for them to walk all over you? And I did it. And I did just that. I let myself go. Yes, you did. And you're better than that. You know, you know, because when, when you decide to one one give her a tissue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can't let someone else have that kind of power over you. You giving up all your power as to who you are and what you want because it's not what you really want. Your love is performance based. You think if you perform, you think if you do the things that will keep somebody else happy, then that will sustain a relationship. And it's not. Because it will never work because you will always keep jumping through hoops to keep the person happy because you think love is performance based and it's not. Not real, true love, not the love that you say you want. There are no boundaries and people will not change in the absence of those boundaries. There are no consequences. If there are no consequences, there's no reason for anyone to ever change. Mm -hmm. I'm just so Because no matter ready. what's happened, you've allowed him to keep coming back. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm just wanting this divorce now I'm so ready to get my life back. Like, I'm just ready to find me. And it's time that you did. When you move on from people who've hurt you, you also move on from that version of yourself that allowed that kind of hurt to be repeatedly inflicted in your own life. Mr. Washington, you eventually come back into the marital home and the two of you decide to try again. Yeah, we decided to let back on, be back on, forgive each other. And, for... and you gave her the ultimatum that if you have a threesome, you will come back. So she gave that to you. Why was that not enough? For one. She should have been honest with me when I came back. If she'd have been honest with me when I came back, we never would have gotten married. But at some point, you could have left, but you decided to stay. So what are you, what are you saying? You decided to stay, but then you would stay, but just do what you wanted to do throughout the relationship? I, my plan was to stay, but at the same time, I would make her feel the same way I felt. Why do you get married? I don't know. I, I figured it'd be different. I mean... What would be different? This was all before... All the fidelities and all the cheating. The different way before then. Okay, so I you mean, decide so... to get married. What do you think is going to be different? Just because you're married? I don't know. I mean... I was taking the big steps to try to make the uh, marriage okay, work. Okay, okay. If you was ready to be married, then why was you on the phone with the dude when I Same came Same reason why you used to be over to her house. I wasn't... No... Come on now. <laughs> all right. You have a money claim in this case for $3,000. Tell yes, me man. about that. I paid off his probation officer. Mm -hmm. And did he did he ask you to make those no. payments? You did it on your own. Yes, because I felt like okay, if we try to build something together, mm -hmm. we sh don't don't we don't have to worry about looking mm -hmm. over your shoulder all the time. Right. But I, my question is, why do you think he owes you for that now? If you did that once again out of the kindness of your heart? Because I feel like without me, he wouldn't be here. Okay, but but there's a difference in how you feel, and legally him being obligated. Because trust me, if you came into court today and told me I paid this $3,000 and he promised me he was going to pay this money back, I would have no problems whatsoever saying, pay her this $3,000 and the two of you go your separate ways. None whatsoever. But that's not what happened. You were wrong in the beginning, before the two of you got married, because and you I, hooked up with somebody else. I, I, I should have been honest up You should have been honest. The, the issue is, he was never able to get past it. He could not forgive. He could not forget. He could not even pretend to forget. Yeah, but and that is what led me like that, Listen, though. he doesn't have a right to do a lot of things, but you allowing him to do those things. Yeah. So at some point, you got to stand up for yourself.
Because staying in a relationship just because you love someone isn't worth it. Because love is not all you need. You need respect. You need honor. You need some integrity in a marriage and you have two children now. I know it's hard, but your entire present does not have to be dictated by the past and what's happened in your history. You know, I read what you wrote in your papers. You said, you know, you've been together for 13 years and you feel so down, you feel so inadequate, and you have this feeling of, of worthlessness because he's always made a decision to choose other people over you. Mm -hmm. Let me explain something to you. A, you never give anyone that kind of power over your life to make you feel worthless about yourself. Oh, you, ne let, you never let anyone define who you are. The things that have happened have been hurtful, but holding on to it makes it harmful. You gotta let it go. You gotta find a way. To, but it's hard. But, but you know what? It, it's hard for a lot of people. My, my, my mother was married for 13 years, the same amount of time the two of you have been together when, her, when, when she got a divorce from my father. It was 13 years. She had young kids. It was hard, but she did it. She did it. And she was able to move forward and have a happy, productive, sane life. You have let anything happen to stay in this relationship because for some reason you think your life is better just because he's in it, and it's just not. You just have too much to offer, and I know he, she made a mistake before the two of you got married, but what's so problematic is you wanted her to pay a price, and you continued this vindictive, punishing behavior, but you continue to have children at the same time. So it's love and hate, and it doesn't work in marriage. I can't award you $3,000 because under the law, I'm not legally allowed to, but everything else I've said here today about love, honor, respect in relationships, especially when the two of you have children, that is what applies here today. And that is what I hope you take out of this courtroom. Good luck to both of you. I feel like, you know, you just took me for granted. You didn't appreciate me. And I, and I apologize for that. But from here, from here on, you know, we'll be cordial for the kids' sake. We can move on. But my advice to you, for me, for me hurting you is, you know, don't let me stop you from loving some again, you know. That, that's my mistake. We're just going to be cordial towards everything. Like, we're just going to be there for the kids. No, we're splitting. It, we're splitting. <laughs> I just can't deal with it no more. I just won't. I just need to find myself. I don't lost myself. I don't, I don't, it, I've been damaged, basically. It's just nothing lasts forever. how you know a relationship is a good relationship for you. It makes you feel better about yourself, not worse. It makes you feel more loved. So if you are not getting those things, it's a relationship you can't be in. Here is today's case. Macius has become extremely jealous, and that ends today. I'm a very secure man. It's just the sneakiness that I'm not going to let slide. If I look at my phone, he thinks I'm cheating. I'm the wise one in this relationship, so my girl should just listen to me. Macius has two options, love me or hit the road. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time in divorce court, we have a virtual audience, and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Natasha from Fort Worth, Texas. Natasha, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us today. Ma'am, this is the case of Perrier versus Crank. Thank you, Juan. Precious Perrier. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mace Crank 
Yes, yes, Your Honor. To court today, you say the two of you have been together for six years. Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. But if Mr. Crank can't learn to trust you, you said the relationship is over. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Yes, Your Honor. That's fine if you agree with her. You understand <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the ramifications at stake today? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, I'll start with you, Ms. Perrier. Tell me what's happening. Um, I've been with Mr. Crank for over six years. I love him. I feel like the trust in our relationship, we have none. And if Mr. Crank can't learn to trust me, I don't think we're gonna make it. We're not even married yet, and we're on divorce court already. How did y'all meet? At the plasma center, and I was going to donate, and we met, and I fell in love, and I went down there and just put on my heels and my dresses and... To donate plasma? Yes, ma'am, I had to go real Macy in. I was on the verge of breaking up with my ex. We was on very bad terms, and... You were on your way out of a relationship. Yes, ma'am, like, literally. But, okay, and what about you? When we first met, we was creeping with each other on significant others, and the issues that we had... Why did you, why did you decide to, to step out on your relationship? Were, were you married or just in a relationship? I was in a relationship. Okay. I got tired of being treated like a child. I'm, I'm a grown man. If it's things that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do. So why didn't you? Why didn't you break up? Why, why didn't you creep instead of break you up with your like significant other so you could actually date Miss Per Year and, and not have to sneak around? If you a grown man, isn't that what grown men do? Yeah, that's what grown men do. But and, and, I don't and what about like and what about child. you? So you were in a relationship as well. You said you were on your way out, yes, but ma'am. would you would you characterize yourself as also sneaking or creeping around, as he put it? In the beginning, yes. So, yes. If you yes. want to just be technical, yes. So, you were hiding this relationship from the person that you were, even though you say you were on the way out, you were also hiding their relationship. Yes. So, now you're here in divorce court because the two of you say you have trust issues in your relationship. Are we surprised? <laughs> <laughs> so, six years together. Yes. And... Significant trust issues. Tell me what's happening, Ms. Perrier. Give me an example of, of why you say Mr. Crank is unreasonable in his, with his level of distrust. Your Honor, I come home from work one day and we decide to make love. And afterwards, he told me that I smelled like a condom. The ne- he waited till the next day to ask me about it. I'm almost sorry I asked this question. <laughs> but Mr. Crank, so you feel like she did not pass a smell test, in well, your opinion? Is- it's not a smell test. It's that, you know, I mean, I'm old enough to know what a condom smells like. Okay. And that's what I smell, and it's I stopped. It's a lot of things that's made what, what, out of what, rubber. You, that, that, that's, one, that's one example. That's, that's interesting that you think that you can detect that certain smell. Miss, Miss Perrier, yeah. were, you, were you actually cheating with someone else? No, ma'am, I was not. So I that was, a, that was just a false then. allegation. Yes, he was ma'am. making an accusation. Yes, ma'am. And it was unfounded, yes, according ma'am. to you. Was there anything else to support what you think you discovered that day? No, ma'am, besides that and the way that we met, and I thought it was... I, I, I thought it was relative. But you met... You met... You thought it was relevant, but you met six years ago. It's been six years. So, the entire six years, you're telling me that there have been issues of yes, mistrust? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I'm on trial every well, is day. She, is she, is she going to get plasma? Is she still going to get plasma? No, she's not. But the way that we met is... It, is, it, it was relevant because when we met, we was... In her relationship, she was taking me to her... to her family's house mm-hmm. to be with me knowing she was still with this man. Why is that raising suspicion with you now? Because the time that we've been together for six years... If she did that with me in the beginning, why can't it happen at this point in time? Why couldn't it go on and happen now? Right. It, she's not. She's not too far gone where she couldn't, where she couldn't start that over. You know, if she goes over there, she do go to her family's house. I don't say anything. But it is her family. It I know. Is, I know is. that's where y'all were sneaking around. But it is still her family. Right. So anytime she goes over there now, it's still it's raising a suspicion it, with you. It's just the things that she does. Mm-hmm. You know, if I call her. You know, if I call her, sometimes she don't answer the phone. She'll wait and call me back saying, oh, she was talking to this person in her family. She just sitting here doing this. When I used to go to her, go to her at her mom's house, her, her, her Your ex, Honor, her ex used to be there. And her, she would fuss her mom out about having her ex there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what's different from then than different from now? By your theory, though... Yes. You could always accuse her right. of, of, of cheating right. 
just because she goes over to the relative's well, home. Right, but I so go I'm after asking facts. for more. Let me ask you, Miss Miss Perrier, have you stepped out of this relationship at any point since the two of you no, Your Honor, committed not, to each other? No, Your Honor, not, not even once. Not once. D and you don't believe her? At some points, no. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Because I feel like Macy's is insecure. He's older than me, mm -hmm. so he feels like I want someone younger. If I wanted to be with someone younger, I would be with someone younger. He just don't seem to understand that. It always seems like you resulted back to me to not being able to believe you, but I go off of facts. Every time that I go in the bathroom and I come out, mm -hmm. you know, how a person can be on their phone doing stuff, when you hear a person come out, you can swipe left and take it away and continue to do Play a, play a game or something. And that's what I feel like that I see. That's what I feel like that I'm doing. The time that we've been together for the whole six years, four and a half years of that, we had no social media on our phone. Now that we agreed upon having it, now is Mr. Not, Crank, not, Mr. I'm, Crank, I think that fixing, the fixing us is, is social media is not the problem. I sit in this courtroom every day and I hear about a, a lot of cheating and a, and a lot of sneaking around and people are very creative in the ways and means they go about doing these things. And I'm just asking you because when I suspect it, I, I call it out. But from everything you've told me so far today, I'm just not convinced. The only thing I'm convinced of is that the way that you met is the way you think this relate. you could also lose this relationship. She can go to her relative's house and visit all the time. Does not mean that she's cheating. What else do you have? Okay, we have the social media thing. The time that we've been together for the whole six years, four and a half years of that, we had no social media on our phone. Because the two of you agreed to that, because right? Because we agreed to that. I said, okay, we're not gonna do it because I don't do social media. Mm -hmm. I have it, but it's mainly for my family. You know, I may get on there, look, see who posts something, I cut it off. Right. Now that we agreed upon having it, now is, you know, she can Ain't video no chat with old me. friends and all of this right here. I don't do that. So, okay, but you agreed now to be on social media. The two we, of you we, agreed we, to be on agreed, social media. We agreed to have social media. We didn't agree to start texting old friends or old friends calling. Give me an I, example it, of what you're talking about. Okay, for example, if I got somebody in fourth grade that I knew in fourth grade, oh, I wish I can video chat with you. I don't chat with nobody in fourth but grade. But what's that wrong with is that? Not is that, is, that, is there something inherently wrong with reconnecting? Is it a male? Is it a man? Yes. Okay, let me see the, the messages you submitted to court. Hello, did you attend, and what's that, the name of the school? Yes, ma'am. And you say, yes, sir, it's me? That's yes. you? Yes, yes, ma'am. And he says, how have you been? And you respond, I've been good. How you doing? I haven't seen you since the fourth grade. Wild time flies. Who is this person? That's my fourth grade teacher, Your Honor. That's yes. her fourth grade teacher? Okay, that's her fourth grade teacher, Your Honor. I'm 11 years her senior. She likes, she likes older men. Are, is, is, are those the messages? Is that yes. it? No, Your Honor, I have a message, too. If he would have read all the messages, he would have seen that there was no type of foul play involved. Let me that. see the messages. Okay, who is in the blue? I'm blue. You busy right now? Yeah, why do you ask? I was about to video you for a second. It will have to be in an hour. Okay, if I'm not busy at five, I'm going to video you just for a minute. So what's going on? Why, why were you, why why were would you, you video, try to video just, chatting? Why just would I video? indulge me for a second and, and why were you video chatting with your former school teacher? It's my teacher, Your Honor. It was just the reconnection. We had just became friends on Facebook. What's your, what is your fourth grade teacher's name? Um, Lamont Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I understand he submitted a statement to court today. Yes. Did you know that Mr. Rogers was submitting a statement to the court, sir? No. Okay, let's see the statement from Mr. Rogers. I've been knowing Precious and her family since she was a little girl. She attended a school I was employed at. Everyone knew Precious, so when I saw her on Facebook, I had to speak to her. It saddens me that she has to appear in divorce court over me. I testify that there is nothing going on between Precious and I. Hopefully, her and her counterpart can solve this. Does this resolve this issue in your mind now? It resolves this one issue. It doesn't resolve the whole thing. Do you know that social media is the way that most people stay connected with, with their family? You, you just said that that's the way you use social media, to stay connected with I, family. I, I would say get rid of it until we fix us. Not, Mr. Crank, not, Mr. I, Crank, I think that fixing the fixing us is, is social media is not the problem. Fixing the two of you has to start with your mindset and what you think about what it means to really trust someone and to love them and to believe in them. 
is 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 the is it not is not and, and the here. fourth grade teacher is is it's what he said that it's sad that their messaging caused a problem in your relationship because it shouldn't have. I think that you are hyper vigilant and it's almost becoming a self fulfilling prophecy to you that you're trying to hold on so tight and you're so worried about losing it that it's actually drawing a wedge between the two of you. You have not presented anything to me today to show me or somehow convince me that Miss Perrier is creeping so, like so, the two of you start doing. You reconnecting with her fourth grade teacher just doesn't do it. It's, it's not evidence for me. I think that you are hyper vigilant about the fact that she might be cheating and it's almost becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy to you that you're trying to hold on to it so tight and you're so worried about losing it that it's having the actual opposite effect, that it's actually drawing a wedge between the two of you. My heart is And on it the is line. pushing her away. My heart is on the line and I don't see me pushing her away. You, I, well, see... I'm telling you what I see. I'm telling you what I see and guess what? She brought you to court today, and the reason she brought you to court was if he can't learn to trust me, the relationship is over. I think there's, I think there's a real issue of, of, of lack of trust here, and I don't see how it's substantiated by anything that's actually happening in the relationship. I don't see it. Here go another one, okay? We got this bank issue, all right? If I go to work and I put my money in the bank, why... She, she has a problem with banks. Like, if she get a tax check, she don't want to put her money in the bank. She wants to cash a check and just hold on to cash. If I put my money in the bank and make it available to you and my children, mm -hmm. put your money with mine and make it available to me and the children. And what do you think she's doing with her money? I, I don't... She may be saving it for a getaway. He thinks it's a getaway fund, Your Honor. I'm going to just she take my money and so, so, Mr. Crank, why it, do you... Why, how do you go from her not putting the money in the bank, just not putting your money in the bank, to the reason is she's saving it to leave me? How do you jump from that fact to that reason. I'm saying Do you that, see what I mean? I'm saying that it may be that reason. I'm not saying that it is. Are you saving it to, to break, to make a clean break? No, Your Honor. My paycheck go in there, but certain money I don't want to go in there. It doesn't mean I don't share it with him because I share everything I get with him. It's nothing... I'm not making a getaway fund or anything like that. Macy just has these insecurities and he puts them on me like it's me, and I haven't done a thing. Is there any... What, what can she do to bring trust into this relationship? I'm just curious. What do you think she could do differently? She can do all of the things that I do. If I give her total, total access to everything that I have, mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. then she can do the same. Don't sit here and say, oh, I love you, just this... Just because it doesn't this, go in the bank don't no. mean you don't have access? Go ahead, sir. And true, but you got a record of mine where it keeps a record, then we can keep a record of yours, too. I don't need to turn around and say, oh, baby, I was there when you spent this, and there go $1,000 still sitting down there where I don't even know where it came from. Here's where we are. I think that you can compromise on the issue when it comes to finances. I think that's something the two of you can talk about and compromise on. However, the main issue in the relationship is a lack of trust. Mr. Crank has expressed throughout this proceeding today that he simply does not trust you, and he has given several reasons why. The evidence is very thin in terms of what you see as could be possible indiscretions that she's engaging in. I don't see it. But I think that the issue is there. I don't know if that's ever going to go away. And it is... It is based on a couple of things, which is how you met. Because, you know, I've, you've heard this saying many times, probably, how you get them is how you lose them. And I think that that's been in the back of your mind the entire relationship. And I think that the 11-year age difference has become an issue for you because there is a fear that you have that she is going to leave you, that she is going to make this getaway. And anytime she's communicating with someone, even if it's her fourth grade teacher, or anytime she does any actions outside of um, things that you don't do, you consider those actions 
to be something that is against the, in, the betterment of your relationship. And you take it personally. And it's not helpful. Because what it's doing is, it's now driven a wedge between the two of you. Because you have to, I'm going to tell you something, the most successful relationships are based on a, a, a sense of, of deep friendship. And what comes in that is trust and loyalty and respect. Those three things. And when you don't have that, it's really hard to continue to build the lifelong relationship that you want if you're going to continue to accuse her or ask her if she's cheating, if she's seeing someone else, especially when she's going through a difficult time. And I think it's driving, I think it's driving the two of you apart. So it's been six years, Mr. Crank, so you have a decision to make. It, it appears that the two of you have been able to have somewhat of a successful relationship, even though, for, for some period of time, even though it started um, with you both engaging in a level of dishonesty to be together. The question you have to ask yourself is, have we evolved into being better people where we're not going to go and cheat on each other to be with someone else? You say you have, he doesn't know. The answer is still very unclear to him. But I don't know that she can do anything different to convince you. I think that you have to make a choice and you have to decide how you're going to live in this relationship going forward. Because the constant accusations without anything to back it up, all you're doing is undermining your relationship and further driving the two of you apart. So you have a child together, you have a young child together, and you said that, you know, you, you, the two of you have argued in front of the children. Don't allow what's going on between the two of you to have an impact on how you raise your children. Yes, Your Honor. I wish both of you the best. Good luck. Thank you. I feel like Judge's face verdict was good. It was on point. Are we going to keep social media part of it? Or are I we gonna... feel like I can tone it down for you. What if you tone it down? Because I love you and I want to be with you. I, I love, love our family. I love my family, too, and I want to be with you, but, you know, I just... We gotta make it work. I mean, I just I can't, can it down. can't have, can't come in every day from work and just have you stuck on the phone. I see for the future that we can make it work, and you know we can go on with a with a better life. If we can't, then we'll be back here when we are married. I feel like we're gonna get married and keep living our life to the best and raising our family and living to the fullest. want today to be the day you break the cycle in your life in these failed marriages that's brought you to court for the fifth time. I want you to choose to break that cycle today. Here is today's case. Christian has his own path of religion, so do I. This religion that he has going on has a conflict on the way I dress. I believe that a woman is not supposed to wear pants. So did you have a discussion and say, as my wife, I don't want you wearing pants, can we agree to this? Did the two of you have that discussion? Yes, we had the discussion. Did she agree to that? Yes, she agreed. Did you agree? I did it to please him. I wear what he wanted me to wear. You agreed to things you didn't really want to agree to. Why? In the name of love. That's not the way love works. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience, and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Teresa from Durham, North Carolina. Teresa, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Moore versus Moore. Thank you, Juan. Miss Kendra Moore. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Mr. Christian Moore. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court to today. The two of you have been married for a year. Yes, Your Honor. And now you're having a number of issues you want to talk about. Yes, Your Honor. Already in divorce court. Yes, Your Honor. Not off to a great start. Yes, Your Honor. You also have a witness with you today, Ms. Chandra McCann. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. McCann. I'll call on you shortly. Yes, Your Honor. 
Ms. Moore, I'll start with you. Why don't you give me some background on your relationship? Well, Your Honor, I think I got married a little too young and we need a divorce because things are not seeing eye to eye. But one, we're open to religious. Now, Christian has his own path of religious, so do I. I was raised as a Christian. He was raised as a Jehovah Witness, but his own path led him different. So does me. I am into spirituality. I really don't have a label on my religion at the moment. Now, at this point, Your Honor, this religion that he has going on has a conflict on the way I dress and what I wear and what to wear going out. So religion has become an issue between the two of you. That's one of the things. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Moore? Yes, Your Honor. Why, why do you to, think you're here today? I'm here to save my marriage because I love my wife. I, I do anything for my wife. I bend over backwards for her. Mm -hmm. Even though we have two different beliefs, mm -hmm. Heck, I still love my wife, regardless so of what the two we go of, through. The two of you are 19, right? Yes, ma'am. You got married at 18. Yes, Your Honor. And you met a year prior to you getting married? Your Honor, we met about two years prior to getting married. So you were in high school? Yes, Your Honor. Were you in the same school? No, Your Honor. We met through social media, Instagram, mm -hmm. form of social media. Mm -hmm. We met up. I'm, I'm aware of Instagram. Yes, Your Honor. I I'm older than y'all, but not that much older. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> so you met on Instagram. Yes, Your you Honor. You started dating. What made you decide to get married at 18 years old? He needed a place to stay, Your Honor. I was there to help. So was my mom. But why get married? The reason of marriage is because the way my mom is, she's into Christianity, and she thought it would be best instead of just living in the house for shacking. My mother does not believe in shacking in a home. So I just want to make sure I understand. The two of you met, you needed a place to live, and, and this was your girlfriend at the time. Yes, Your Honor. So in order for you to live with her, you decided to go ahead and get married. Yes, Your Honor. Did you love her? I do love my wife, Your Honor. What about you? Yes, Your Honor, I do love my husband. I just felt like it was a little bit of rushed. Did you, was... did you have a discussion about the differences in religion, for example, before the two of you Yes, Your got Honor, married? we did. But I didn't think it would affect the way I dress or how I wear my makeup or anything regarding to me. So what is he telling you in regards to how you dress and how you wear your makeup? For example, Your Honor, he took away the pants from me. So I told Christian, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I got changed up. It was hot, so I decided to put on some shorts. So, he didn't say anything to me about the shorts until I went to the grocery store, Your Honor. When what did he say to you? <clears throat> when I got back from the grocery store, Your Honor, my pants were damaged. They were gone. They were nowhere to be found. All of your pants? My pants and my shirts. What's the issue with pants? The issue with pants is I believe that a woman is not supposed to wear pants. Mm -hmm. I believe a woman's supposed to wear a dress. Mm. If a woman walk around wearing booty shorts or wearing pants that's tight, I'ma think she's a whore. Now, let, let's just back up for a second. Yes. When you got married, was she wearing pants? Yes, she was wearing pants. So why did you think that was gonna change after the two of you got married? I'm not gonna force her to change what she believe. I give her a suggestion. Your suggestion is taking her pants and her shirts and damaging them? That, that's I your subtle way pants. of suggesting that you don't want her to wear pants? I didn't take her pants or damage them. Okay, so she... I took her pants and I hid it from her, but I didn't take it and damaged it. Okay, so... That's what I'm saying. But that's a little more than a suggestion. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. But did you have a discussion before you got married because she was wearing pants when you met her? Am I right? Yes. So, did you have a discussion and say, as my wife, I, I, I don't want you wearing pants. Can we agree to this? Did the two of you have that discussion? Yes, we had the discussion. Did she agree to that? Yes, she agreed. Did you agree? I agree, Your Honor. I so, agree. you changed Honor. your mind? I, I agreed. I made... I did it to please him. Mm -hmm. I wear what he wanted me to wear. For example, what I have on today, Your Honor, is something that he would want me to wear. Are you, do you have on pants? What do you wear? No, no, Your Honor. I have on a long dress. As he stated, he would like me to wear long dresses. And no is this your mother? Yes, Your Honor. So she's dressed appropriately, but her mother is not, according to you. I don't know what her mother got on right now because I can't see it. She's wearing pants. This is inappropriate to you, right? Yes, it is. Okay.
So your daughter comes to you at 18 years old. Right. She said that she wants to get married. What yes. is your response to that? I didn't approve. I, I didn't. Her mothers want us to get a divorce. I don't know why. You say her mother is the reason she wants a divorce? Yes. What do you think about that? No, Your Honor, I am not the reason. So you agreed that you wouldn't wear pants, and he said you switched up on them in the middle of marriage. Why'd you agree to it if you didn't really, if that's not how you really felt? Well, Your Honor, I love my husband. I wanted to please him in the marriage. I tried to do everything to please him. I, I even bought a couple of dresses, long, in modesty way, covered up, long sleeve and all. Mm -hmm. And I did change. And also, Your Honor, he wanted me to wear a hijab, also known as a turban. Mm -hmm. I went and bought a couple of those. Mm -hmm. When I bought a couple of those, Your Honor, I put it on, had the long dress. I thought I was in the right path. But, Your Honor, I had to go in the mirror and put on some makeup because I wasn't about to walk around with a blank face. Mm -hmm. So I come out, and he doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. He wants me to be all natural, Your Honor. But I disagree. I did agree in the beginning to do it for him to please him, but it seems like nothing is pleasing him. Let me ask you something, Miss Moore, because you said in the beginning the reason why the two of you got along so well and started dating was because he accepted you for who you were. What did you mean by that? Okay, Your Honor, he accepted me for who I am because I have one eye, I'm blind in my left eye. Mm -hmm. And I was born that way. Mm -hmm. So he accepted me for the way I was. And I felt loved and accepted by him. And, and that's I... all changed now, according to you. What was the issue with the makeup? The issue with the makeup is, I believe that it's witchcraft. You put makeup on your face and it damages your face. Mm. That's why I don't like makeup. And really... It damages your face? Yes, wow. ma'am. I should wipe off this lip gloss mm. right now, then. Me too. Where do you get your core set of beliefs from? Who taught you this? I had came across on YouTube, and it's a group that I always watch, mm -hmm. and I like how they teach. Mm -hmm. And I just learned from them. They're like, women not sure we're supposed to wear pants, mm -hmm. or women are not supposed to wear makeup, women not supposed to wear wigs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? That is right. And I came to Kendra the first time we met. I'm like, this is what I believe. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, I can agree to that. And once we start dating and getting to the into a relationship and all that, she started to not like it. Mm-hmm. She switched like, up on you. Yeah, and basically in public, she had her hijab on, and she took it off. And I looked at her, I'm like, that's disrespectful. I would like to hear from Miss McCann. You are Kendra's mother. Yes, I am. Am I right, ma'am? Okay, step up, please. How you doing, Your Honor? I'm great. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So your daughter comes to you at 18 years old. Right. She said that she wants to get married. What yes, is your response to that? I didn't approve. I, d I didn't. I said, you're too young. I said, you don't even know the first thing about marriage. I said, marriage is a whole big thing. And you're not ready. And she said, no, I love him and I'm ready. I said, I understand. But no, I disagree. Did you tell them in order for him to continue to live with you, they needed to be married instead of shacking? Well, I told him this. I said, you guys, if you're gonna live together, you have to get married. I said, but if you're not ready to get married, he has to go. Mm -hmm. He has to go his own way. So I believe by me saying that, they took it upon themselves to go ahead and say, well, we're gonna get married because we wanna stay together. Mm -hmm. Mr. Moore... Mm -hmm. Yes, has talked today in court about his beliefs. Yes, ma'am. And he said that Miss Moore agreed to all of these things in regards to his religion, things that she would, would not do. Do you know about the discussion the two of them um, had? No, ma'am, I don't. All I know is whatever they discussed about, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And now we're in court now. Her mothers want us to get a divorce. I don't know why. Like, I love my wife. I bend over backwards for her, but... I'm not finna sit up here and just... I love you, Kendra. I'm gonna be honest with you, I love you. But I'm not finna sit up here and just pretend what I'm doing. I ask, do you wanna do stuff? I'm not forcing you, I'm not making you. You say her mother is the reason she wants a divorce? Yes. What, what do you think about that, Miss no, McCann? No, Your Honor, I am not the reason. You know what you should really think about when you get married? Accepting the person you're marrying for who they are. When you love yourself, and you present yourself and you go out to the world with that self-love, there are going to be many people that are gonna love you, Miss Kendra Moore, 
for exactly who you are. Do y'all still live together under yes, the same household? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever lived apart since they've been married for this no, past year? We haven't. Well, what is the living situation? I moved in with them because my daughter asked me. She said, Mom, you can come and stay with me and Christian. I said, okay, I'll only be here for a little while. How long have you been there? I've been there since December, about seven, eight months now. Maybe. And uh, originally they moved in with you? They were living with me, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. And then you moved out and got your own place at some point? Yes, yes ma'am. How long after they got their own place did you move in? I moved in like uh, three months after they got their own place. Mm -hmm. So you've only lived on your own for three months? Your Honor, we lived on our because, own. Because, you know, I have to tell you, Mr. Moore, you say she wants to get a divorce because of her mom. Her mom also told her not to get married, and she did anyway. I don't know if her mom has that much what? influence over her. I don't. I don't. Did you ask your mom to live with you when you had your own place? Yes, Your Honor. We all had an agreement. Of course, he is my husband, so I talked to him before even letting mom move in. Mm -hmm. Did you... So you Your agreed Honor, to it? Uh, you agreed, sir? Yeah, I did agree to it. Do the two of you get along? Did you, you live honor, together? I'm gonna be honest. Her mother drinks a lot. Like, I can't... I can't get with that. She always taking Kendra with her. You know what I'm saying? They going to parties. And... I would not expect this from Miss Moore and Miss McCann. Are you guys a mother-daughter duo hitting the streets at night? <laughs> Your Honor. According to Mr. Moore, that's what's happening. No, no, I do not drink a lot. He's just saying that. I, I don't understand, but I do not. Yes, she goes with me. She does. How often? At maybe once a month, a weekend oh. out of a month. A weekend out of a month? He does not want us together. He, I believe he's jealous of our relationship. Mm. I really do. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Ms. McCann. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Thank Judge. You. Be careful. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. You also say there's an issue with the finances. What's going on? Do, do you work, sir? Your Honor, I go to constru construction school. Okay. That's great. So you're in school? Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful. What about you? I work for a customer service, mm -hmm. taking calls. So you're both doing something to pursue careers? Yes, Your Honor. We're okay. both doing something productive. Great. So I want to be clear on something, Ms. Moore. You're here today because you want a divorce? Yes, Your Honor. This is the end of the road for you? Yes, Your Honor. Have you taken proactive steps outside of being in divorce court to get a divorce? I have, Your Honor. I have. What do you have to say about that, Ms. Moore? Mr. Moore? She's made up her mind. I have been asking Kendra, can we go to marriage counseling? I have mm -hmm. suggested that to her, and she never wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I literally sat down, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to get a divorce. I don't have to get a divorce. I want to sit here and I want to work out my marriage. Because if you go separate ways, all you're going to do is end up back in the same situation. want to get a divorce. Well, let me explain something to you, Mr. Moore. I don't think that's an accurate statement, sir. Two of you got married before you really settled into becoming who you were. You tried to change who you were because you met someone you liked and you decided that you wanted to change for him. That never works. It wasn't really you. You wanted to wear pants, you wanted to wear shorts, you want to wear makeup, you want to go out and have a drink with your mama sometimes. Yes, There's nothing wrong with that. But what you don't do, the mistake you made is, you agree to things you didn't really want to agree to. Why? In the name of love. That's not the way love works. You know what you should really think about when you get married? Radical acceptance. Accepting the person you're marrying for who they are. And if you don't like who they are, if you don't like who they present themselves to be, you don't get married because you're talking about a lifetime commitment. And when you're making a lifetime commitment, what decision do you make at 18 years old where you say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? You don't make it about your career because there are peaks in their valleys. And you certainly don't make it about a marriage when you really don't know someone that well. And when you believe you have to change in order to make the marriage work from the very beginning. And I'm afraid you did that because you thought he was accepting of you just the way you were. When you love yourself and you present yourself and you go out to the world with that self-love, there are going to be many people over the course of your life 
that are going to love you, Ms. Kendra Moore, mm -hmm. for exactly who you are. Mr. Moore, you got to find somebody who does not want to wear pants, does not believe in makeup, all those beliefs that you believe, I'm not saying you're wrong either. It's the way you think. But instead of finding a woman and then wanting her to change and say, okay, you're my woman, these are the things that you have to do in order to be with me, no, from the very beginning, you find somebody that has those same philosophies and you won't have this conflict, you won't have these issues. And I'm sorry for you if you really believe that splitting up means that you're just going to get in another relationship where you're split up again because that's not what starting over in relationships is about. You're not starting over from scratch. Mm -hmm. I always say you're starting over from experience. You have a little bit of experience now. And you can learn from the mistakes and the decisions that you made when you got into this marriage. No one who's ever come into this courtroom has ever said to me, I wish we would have moved faster in our relationship. They always say they wish they would have taken their time. 19 years old, that's what you're really supposed to be doing. Figuring out who you are, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You can shake your head, but Mr. Moore, I'm telling you now, the, the, the men on those videos, they aren't the only ones that know something about life. So I wish the both of you well and I wish you good luck. You don't want to listen, that's on you. Okay. When it comes to judge Faye verdict, I think self-love is the best love, and I will take her advice into consideration. When it comes to judge Faith verdict, yeah, you can sit up here and suggest getting divorced, but divorce for what? I agree with judge Faith verdict. I do. I love my daughter. Well, All I can say is I wish him well okay. with, with his life. I wish everything, nothing but the best for him but I'm gonna take my daughter with me because I wish him well. Nothing but the best. You know what? He doesn't know right now he has a chance he needs to grow and learn. And you're always <laughs> listening to your mama. That's okay. She's supposed to listen to me.